Well, hey friends, welcome back to the Bedrock Guide. I can't believe it's several episodes already into the Bedrock Guide season. It feels like we just started yesterday. But look what we already have. Crop farms, animal farms, this stuff, and the most beautiful scenery you could ever ask for in any Minecraft world. I mean, just look at it. The one thing I don't have, I don't have a place to call home. I don't know about you, but after a while, I get kind of tired of laying on the ground. So I think it's time we fix that. I don't know, man. I want to know what you guys think, but I think this is the best house I've ever built. I think we could just probably call it an episode right here. I've got a roof. I got some walls. I got a door. I even got my bed. I'm still sleeping on the ground, but this isn't good enough, is it? Okay, 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 fine. We can do better. Oh yeah, surely you guys love this one. No, really? Tough crowd. This may not be the most impressive house in the world, but today on the Bedrock Guide, I'm going to show you how to build with some simple techniques to make your house look way more impressive than this. This is pretty bad. If you want to move beyond the dirt houses into something a little bit more impressive, it doesn't start here. It actually starts here. Get yourself a flat creative test world and then go into the inventory and just start browsing through the blocks. Just keep in mind, you're gonna wanna be a little reasonable with your expectations. Your first house is not gonna be made out of diamond blocks. You're just not gonna be able to get the resources to do something like this, nor should you, it looks terrible. I bet we could find a way to make that look good though. Maybe in episode 200, we'll see. Try to think about some things that you have easy access to or have the ability to go get without too much effort. This is our first house after all, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but we're gonna make it look good. Regardless of the early game or late game, woods are always a very versatile option. They blend well together, you can make really cool gradients with them, and they contrast well with things like cobblestone. Or if you have a decent amount of coal, you could even go for some stone bricks. Decide on a block palette that you want to use, and then just start placing blocks. Another thing I like to do just to get some inspiration is look online at concept art or real life architecture. It could give you some really cool ideas for houses. And before you know it, you're gonna have a test world filled with ideas. Not everything you build in your test world is ever going to get used, like I threw this together one time, never got used. Or you may build multiple iterations of an idea and see what comes out better. Just keep in mind that this is a test world and you don't have to complete the entire build. For example, the Ender Pearl, my pirate ship from the first season of the Bedrock Guide. This is not the completed build. Just get enough so that you can get a materials list so you're not mining resources that you don't need and so that you get enough idea of the shape and how the whole build will come together when you finally build it in survival. If you put in the work thinking it through before you actually build it, you're gonna come up with some really cool stuff. This is where it starts. Get a creative test world. Okay, so you've spent time in a creative test world and you've gone out and mined all of the materials you need. So it's time to build, right? <laughs> Wrong. The next step in the build process is not building, but it is determining where you're gonna build. A lot of people skip over this step and just start placing blocks. And sometimes it can get you into trouble. You might run out of space. You might wanna build something else that now you don't have room for. Picking a spot and getting it ready are two very important parts of this process. Before I even started the Bedrock Guide, I chose this location for a variety of reasons. If you look at it from above, it's a relatively flat space. Yeah, it's got some dips, it's got some cracks, but for the most part, this will be a relatively easy space to build a really cool looking house and eventually a small village. The flat space combined with the incredible view behind it, it just makes for a perfect build site. You might notice I've got some blocks placed on the ground here that are not exactly buildings, but they represent things that are going to be built throughout the course of the early game. What those things are, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Put your suggestions and guesses down in the comments below. Maybe I'll change my plans if you come up with a good idea. Oh yeah, and speaking of comments, let's go ahead and do our comment of the day. AC9T says a shield would definitely help with that creeper skeleton anxiety. Just a side note, AC9T? That sounds like a Star Wars character, like a droid. I like your username. Thanks for the comment. Oh, I just can't express how appropriate this comment is for today's video based on what you're gonna see in a few moments. If you missed the previous episode where we went caving and branch mining and up to the mountaintops, I ran into uh, a squad of creepers. There was like three of them and a skeleton and a spider and all sorts of stuff down in a cave that was trying to take me out. And I dove head first into battle, brave as could be. <laughs> No, oh, no, there's a creeper. Did you see that back there? 
but that's beside the point. I survived. I made it through the entire episode and it was great. Fast forward to today, Blue Jay decides to leave his game running in the background and it couldn't have been more than two or three minutes, but I kind of forgot that it was there. I was actually checking out comments and stuff for this video when disaster struck. Well, I knew it wouldn't last forever. Um, first death of the season? Good thing this isn't a hardcore world. I look away from my screen for two seconds. Creeper blows me up. I'm not kidding. This is the way it happens every single time. I get comfortable. I get distracted. I look away. I'm not even playing the game and a creeper blows me up. Mojang, I'm begging you. Please give us a pause button. Well, hopefully that's the last creeper death for a while. Let's start building. In a creative copy of this world, I have mapped out where I wanna start this house and it is right here on top of this block. Now, what you're gonna say is, Blue Jay, your house is floating. We'll get to that later. To start, I'm gonna build a foundation that is nine blocks by 17 blocks with diagonal corners that are three blocks long. The end result should look something like this. Repeat that pattern one more time so that your entire foundation is two blocks tall all the way around. And then go ahead and fill in the top layer with dirt, keeping in mind that you need to light up the underside so that you don't get any creepers or spiders or anything else spawning under there. And with that, the foundation is complete. I want some grass to grow up on top of our foundation, so I've run some temporary blocks so that the grass will grow up those blocks and eventually give us a really nice looking front lawn. The next step before building the house is to build the front porch. We're gonna start with a couple of pillars made out of dark oak and the deck it itself will be built out of oak slabs. Toss in a couple of stairs because we'll need a way to get up and down between the deck and ground level. And then with a handful of dark oak fences, we're gonna make a railing all the way around the porch. To finish off the front porch, we're gonna use one of my absolute favorite decoration techniques when it comes to logs. If you use your ax on a log, it will strip off the bark, leaving you with the best looking pillar you've ever seen. As for the house itself, I'm gonna start by building the basic outline made out of stone bricks, trying to put in twists and turns so it's not just a straight rectangle. Next, I'll build up some dark oak pillars as a wireframe to start giving the house its final shape. Before I build the walls of the house, I'm going to use dark oak stairs, alternating right side up and upside down to make the outline of the roof. Just inside the roof outline, I'm going to add another layer, this time using spruce stairs. I'm also going to leave out the roof line on the back of the house as I'll be adding a tower later on in the build. Now it's time for the walls. I'm going to use birch planks for now because they contrast really well with the dark oak and spruce. But later on, I will add some additional detailing that will change this look altogether. Hey, nice. At this point, it's actually starting to look like a house, but we're not done yet. This house is gonna be a two story. So I'm gonna repeat some of the same steps we did earlier on, like building out a wireframe and putting on a second roof line. The exterior is really coming together, but to make this house truly stand out, it's time to add that tower we talked about. Using the same stripped dark oak logs as before, I'm going to build this tower up higher than the second story roof. This will add some additional height to one corner of the house. The tower is nearly complete, but before finishing it, I now have enough walls in place to finish filling in the first two roofs. Using a combination of spruce and oak stairs, I'm going to create a gradient effect that will help break up the flat look for something a little more interesting. With the two lower roofs completed, I'm ready to finish the tower. I'm going to add some dark oak fences to round off the edges and provide some additional detailing from top to bottom. And then on top of the dark oak fences, I'll begin building out the roof with a dark oak log border. With the border complete, I'm going to use a combination of dark oak, spruce, oak, and birch planks to build out a cone-shaped roof, topped off with some dark oak fences and an iron bar. With the beautiful tower complete on the house, we are almost done with the exterior, it's time to start doing a little bit of detailing. Every good house needs natural light. So I'll poke some holes in the walls for a few windows. To add additional detail to the windows, toss in some dirt and dark oak trap doors for some great looking flower boxes and spruce trap doors for window shutters. I found a variety of flowers laying around the plains biome. So let's put those in the flower boxes for finishing touches. And with that, the exterior of my house is 
almost done. Every good house needs a door or two. And you might notice I don't have any glass in these windows, which made me realize I don't have any sand. But you might also notice as well, the house looks a lot different than when it started. These walls were entirely birch planks before, and I decided to go for the gradient look on the walls as well as the roof. And I think it adds some really nice detailing to the house. Just don't throw eggs at it like I just did. Let's go get some sand. I just broke my shovel, but let's get enough for one full stack of sand and we'll call it good. Oh, that looks so good from a long way off. Oh, I love it. I mean, I completely went the wrong direction to get home, but my goodness, that is a good view. Okay, glass. I'm gonna take my sand and toss it in the furnace, maybe empty out the inventory while that's cooking. And I did just realize one thing that we're gonna have to take care of before the episode is over. The stone bricks need to look a little bit more like that. Just some variety to break up the flatness. But aside from that, the exterior is looking great. If you didn't know, smelting sand gives you glass blocks, which you can then go and place down in the shape of a window. I don't think that looks very good. And unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna break this and I'm not gonna get it back. We do have another option, which I prefer most times. If you take six glass blocks in your crafting table, you can get 16 glass panes. Glass panes sit in the middle of the block a little bit further back, so it gives a little bit more depth to the build. So for all of my windows, I'm going to opt for glass panes. And I think you should too, unless you like glass blocks. Do whatever you want. It's fine. It's your house. This is my house. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's one more thing on the exterior I want to do. And that's to put a staircase right here so we can easily get out the side door, down the stairs, over to our animal or crop farms. And I'll end up putting a fence around the border as well, just to close it all in and make it look nice and tidy. Oh yes, the whole exterior is done. I've got the stone variation in place, oh, except for the stairs. Maybe I'll put a cobblestone stair there or something. I've got my fresh windows installed. I've even started building up the ground a little bit around the house. There's still quite a bit of work to do as you can see, but at least I can get up on my front porch and in the front door and into this mess. Which brings me to my next point. I need to build up an interior inside this house, but I'm not gonna do it step by step for this video. I wanted to focus more on the exterior and how to build the house itself, but I will come back and I'll show you my favorite parts and some little tips and tricks. If you want to see a interior design guide, make sure to leave that comment in the comment section. And if I see enough interest, maybe we'll go ahead and do one of those soon. But for today, Today, check out this interior. This place looks amazing. And even though this was a quick jump cut for you guys, this actually took me like two or three hours. Man, this took longer than I expected it to, but it turned out great. Let's walk through the house and see what we've got. I've got a couch right here where we can sit down and watch some scary movies of creepers on our home entertainment system. I got a TV sitting on an Anvil TV stand with a couple of looms on each side for speaker systems. I'm not necessarily gonna go into what these blocks do functionally in this episode because we will cover them later on, but just know that they look really, really cool for this particular setup. This over here is the furnace that keeps our house warm. And I do want to talk about this just briefly because this is our first auto smelter in the world, which is going to introduce a whole world of automation. And this is one of the great things we can do with it. This right here is a hopper as well as this. And there's one sitting underneath this furnace as well that you can't see that is pointing directly into this barrel. Hoppers are directional. So if we break this, you can place it again against something, or you can place it on something or under something, and it will be facing vertically like that. If you place a hopper into the top of a furnace, whatever container is sitting above the hopper, it will grab the items and then push them down into the container below. And because this furnace has two slots, the hopper that's sitting on top of the furnace will go into the smeltable items slot, and the hopper that is going into the side of the furnace will go into the fuel slot. So all we gotta do is preload this with a bunch of stuff that we want smelted and preload this with a bunch of coal and we have our first auto smelter and once each item is done cooking it will actually get pulled down into the hopper below here that's pointing into this barrel and drop it right in there ready for us to pick up it's a very cool system we'll do many many more things like this and even more 
complex than this in the future. But moving on for today, this is our little cozy kitchen, complete with a stove. I have a sink with water in it, just in case we want to wash some dishes. I've got a refrigerator where we can store different types of food with a little towel rack on the side. <laughs> this is actually a painting. And you can make the painting look like, well, whatever paintings look like in Minecraft. There are a variety of options and they all pop up at random. And I'm just gonna keep rolling this until I get my towel back because I like that look. There we go. And these things right here are actually item frames. I have a pair of shears that could represent maybe something like tongs. If we wanna grab something and stuff it on the grill, we have that option. Uh, if we want to have this as like a cutting board, we can cut up some meat and start cooking it. We can also put some potatoes over here to wash them in the sink before we cook them. This is a fully functioning kitchen. And no joke, this actually works. We could put that meat or that potato right on the campfire and cook it and it'll pop out and we can grab it. That's pretty much it for the downstairs. Before we venture upstairs, I do wanna show you this secret amazing room right here. Check it out, ready? Three, two, one, go. Um, it's not done. <laughs> this is the tower. I have other plans for this in the future that we are not going to get to today. So it's going to stay uh, unfinished for the time being, but just know we've got some pretty cool plans for the tower. Venturing on upstairs, this is my bedroom. And it does look like a bedroom, complete with a balcony and a view. Oh my word. Look at that view. Could it get any better than this? I don't think so. It overlooks our crop farms and our animal farms and we can see the mountain range behind. My goodness, what a great view to wake up to in the morning, just staring at the mountains out the window. This is a smoker, which I have turned around backwards because it looks kind of like a nightstand. Maybe that's a drawer, maybe that's the bottom drawer. And on top of our nightstand, we have a lamp. Obviously, we have our bed and a crafting table. I don't really have an explanation for this as to why it's in the bedroom, but I needed a place for a crafting table, so it's there. A couple more pictures, a flower pot, some trap doors for shelves. This thing right here, I, I wish I could say I came up with this idea on my own, but I saw something very similar on Google and I adapted it just a tad bit, so it's still kind of my idea. This is our wardrobe. And on the top of the wardrobe, we've got a couple more barrels that we can store some valuable things that we want to keep in our bedroom. And if we open these doors, there's an armor stand and another drawer that we can store stuff in. I have just the armor to put on this armor stand. Let's go grab it. This is the first armor I ever crafted in the world. It's my leather armor. We're gonna keep it, maybe find some armor trims for it at some point, but for now, it is going to go on display in my closet on this armor stand. Eventually, this armor is going to get put in uh, in storage as well, because this is our first ever iron armor in the world. I plan to keep a lot of things. Over here, I have a non-functional ironing board in case we ever wanna, you know, straighten our clothes up and look fancy. Seemed like a good thing to put in the bed bedroom and some curtains in case we want to close the curtains at night just to keep the scary things from creeping in. But my goodness, I could not be happier with how this house turned out. Before we end out the episode, there's only one more thing I want to do. The house itself is looking fantastic on the exterior and the landscape is okay for now. This will adapt over time as we build a few more things in this area, but I've run completely out of dirt, but I am going to go ahead and deforest the the largest cherry tree biome in the world is the single cherry tree over there. We're gonna chop it down. Don't worry, I'm gonna plant it back. But I thought it would be nice to get a few cherry tree saplings and plant them over by the house to give a little pop of color around that sea of brown. Oh, this wood is so beautiful. We're gonna have to find a use for this at some point. We got our first cherry sapling, yeah! And I feel we should plant it right back down where it was. This tree will never look the same, but we'll always have it in the memory. Man, this tree has been really generous with saplings. Maybe I'll plant a couple more trees over here. Oh, there's another one. Thank you so much, tree. Wouldn't it be great if we turned a joke into an actual forest of cherry trees over here? Not today. This right here is the perfect spot for a cherry tree. And if you take bone meal and you use it on a sapling, eventually it will grow a cherry tree. Yes, look at it. Oh, it's so nice. Chickens, what do you think? Do you love it? They don't care. I care though. I'm gonna get a couple more in here. I love it. I know I say that a lot, but I do. It just adds the perfect amount of color to the area just to spice it up a little bit. I've got a couple more cherry trees over here. 
to kind of outline the farm. And I have a few more saplings planted back here that I'm not gonna bone meal at the moment because I'm out of bone meal for the time being, except for these five pieces. And I wanna do one more thing. Up here on our front lawn, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the bone meal on the grass. And that will give us a few flowers and some taller grass just to make it look a little bit more overgrown. And I'm gonna be careful not to do that right here on my pathway that goes to the door. So we'll just use it a little bit more sparingly. And guys, I think that's gonna do it. I know that I don't have any paths connecting up the farm to the house just yet, but I'm gonna wait on that for just a moment. There were some other things in this area that we're gonna build that I wanna make sure I've got planned out properly before I put any paths down. So we will take care of that in a future episode. But if you loved this building guide today, be sure to let me know in the comment section and by leaving a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And don't go anywhere because there's more Bedrock Guide content on the way.